Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Scarpin, PhD in Accounting. And our topic today is forecasting techniques, exponential smoothing. There are some different exponential smoothing. We will be talking about that later. But statistical forecasting models, usually we work with time series. Uh, and then we have a based on the past number. So based on T, like weekly sales, monthly sales, or any other series. And time series generally have components such as random behavior, trends, seasonal effects, and cyclical effects. A stationary time, time, uh, time series, sorry, have only one random behavior. That is our video today. And then we have the exponential smoothing uh, model or moving average. Very good for short time periods. And then we will go with the simple exponential smoothing model, where the forecasting for t plus 1 for tomorrow or next week or next month, 1 minus alpha times ft times the previous uh, forecasting, plus alpha times a, the actual number of the previous period. So if I am... I would like to forecast my sales for the next week. The, I go on 1 minus alpha times the forecast of previous week plus alpha times the actual number of the previous week. So the next or the first actual number known or the last actual number known. Whereas t plus 1 is the forecast for time period t plus 1, f is the forecast for period t, a t is the observed value or actual value in period t. And alpha is a constant between 0 and 1. Call it a smoothing constant. So to begin, we need to start it. Set f1 and f2 equal to actual observation in period 1 or a1. So if we go to our Excel file, so guys, remember all our uh, Excel files, they are free and the link to download it is in our video description. So let's consider here the smoothing constant or alpha equal to 0 0.5. And then I did some simulations for 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 8, and 9. And then the MAPE, the, the mean absolute percentage error. And then we will see which one is better. So, okay. For the first and second period, equal to the previous one. And then the first period, we don't actually use it because, okay, uh, it will give us a main equal to zero. So it will look like that our system is perfect. So here, how do we do with the second one? So let's go back to our formula. 1 minus alpha times the forecast. So equal to 1. Oops. 1 minus this alpha, and let's fix it. Let's fix only the C because then we copy and paste to the other ones. Times the forecast plus alpha. And let's fix it again, only the C, or sorry, only the 2. Only the 2, and here also only the 2 times our previous actual number. And then we have the uh, 260. And here, we also need to come here because we will copy and paste to the other sides. So if you want to go back without doing the other side, so 1 minus alpha, and then we need to fix it, times the previous forecast plus alpha, let's fix it, times the previous actual number. And then we just copy and paste 
for the remaining numbers here and then we go one more now we are forecasting my weekly sales of product x for the week 21 and here how do we know how much the best alpha if you go to the textbooks they will tell you okay do simulations so here 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 and check the lowest Maybe. So it looks like 0 0.7 is the best one because the numbers go start going down and then going up again. But let's check it later with another technique. So we have two additional techniques. The first one is uh, using data analysis where we can work with exponential smoothing. And the damping factor it is not the alpha, it is one minus alpha. So let's come here, exponential is smooth. And let's consider here uh, the alpha as, I don't know, 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 is our alpha. So here, data, data analysis, exponential is smoothing. So let's delete all of this. So, okay, what do we have? Input range, our actual numbers. Oops. Our actual numbers. And then labels. The dumping factor, it doesn't allow us to go to a cell. So that is bad. So, but remember, it's not the alpha, it's 1 minus alpha, so 0, 0 0.4. And then the output range, all we need to do is to go on the first number here, and we can also create a chart output. And here, actual and forecast. So very good for our... Yeah, it's pretty. So we have here an exponential is moving. And then if we go to, let's go on this say standard here. And then we come here to the forecast 0 0.6. Let's go on green. Forecast, oops. Forecast here on green, we will get the same numbers. However, it stopped on the week 20. We want the week 21. So they create a formula here. So all we need to do is copy and paste the formula one week more and then 272. However, we cannot go further because if we go further, we have no actual number. So that is why this is a very good uh, method for short period so that is the method so and then we can delete this na here and here our chart is dynamic so don't change the numbers if you don't want to mess with your chart and there is another way to do that is using solver so using solver, so come here on the data analysis. If you don't have one of the two, by the way, just come file, options, addings, Excel addings, go, and then solver adding. So if you go on solver, what do we have? So the regular solver is this one. So here, what do we do on the regular solver? So we create a formula just like the other formula. So we create it. So we create the formulas here. And then alpha, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and then we will face the same A, 0 0.6, and whatever. So we just leave it blank. So the MAPE will be very huge because we are getting only the 352 as the forecast. So very huge error, by the way. So how do we do that? Solver, set objective. What do we want here? We want an alpha where 
the average error the MAP, so the MAP is the set objective, we needed the lowest number possible. By changing the variable cells, what cell do we want to change? The alpha. So, okay, try to find an alpha or optimal alpha that will go our MAP to the lowest number. And then solving, and then we can have some different solving. So we will go on that. So the first, the standard non-linear, and then we keep it. Whoa, 063. So it's not 07, 22.26 lower than these two. What if we change our method for simplex? This is not a linear program. So we cannot solve it using simplex. So that is why it's not the standard. And then the last one, evolutionary. Let's see what we have. Also, we cannot do that. So that is why we usually keep the GRG nonlinear. It is the standard option. So we just keep it. And then we have it. Easy, huh? So this is the uh, first method, the simple exponential smoothing. There are other two where we are trained in seasonality. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Questions, questions or comments, leave them here or email me. Have a very nice day and God bless you.